friends, welcome back to the Pottery Studio. My name is Maya and today we're going to be making a thumbprint tumbler. So let's get into it. Here are the tools I'm using for the slab building project. I always use a wedging board as my work surface. This is just canvas wrapped around wood. You can use whatever work surface you like best, but I like working on cloth because the clay doesn't stick to it. Besides the wedging table, I'm using two half centimeter thickness gauges, a rolling pin, a ruler, a knife, a needle tool, a scoring tool, my new angle cutter, a rib, and a wire tool. I have all the tools I'm using linked in the description. As always with slab building, you're going to start by rolling out a slab. I'm using some reclaim for this project that I added a lot of iron to. So the clay is a bit darker and has some color variation, which I think looks beautiful in organic forms. You want to roll out your slab slowly, flipping it as you go. The thickness gauges will make our slab an even half centimeter thick. You want to always compress the clay at the end with your rib to smooth and strengthen the clay. Next, I'm going to cut out the body of my cup. I'm using a ruler to cut out a rectangle that is 27 by 14 centimeters. I want my cup to be big enough to hold a nice glass of water or juice. Don't forget that your clay will also shrink during the firing. Mine shrinks about 12%. Next, I'm using my new angle cutter to cut the connecting edges at 45 degrees. This was the first time I used this tool and it actually worked really great. I'll definitely keep using it for future projects. But you don't need this tool if you don't have it. You can also use a knife or a needle tool to make the same cut. Then I will score the two sides and press them together. I'm not using slip in this project because the clay is already quite wet and doesn't need any moisture added. Smooth the overlapping sides together as best as you can. I like to smooth it so that the connection disappears as much as possible. Next, we'll work on the bottom of the cup. You can use any leftovers that you have from the original slab or just roll out a new half centimeter slab. Then we'll attach it in the same way, score each side and press them into each other. I recommend you wait to trim the slab until after the attachment because it can get squished during the attaching process and you will get the cleanest line by trimming it after it's attached.
Once it's attached, trim off the excess with your needle tool and blend the bottom into the walls to hide the connection line. Next, you can shape your cup how you like. I decided I wanted to flare out the rim a little bit to add some movement. To make the thumbprint, simply squeeze the body of the cup with your thumb and fingers. It helps to support the wall from the inside so that you don't distort the whole cup, just the part where you're squeezing. Once you're finished and happy with the shape, you can let your tumbler dry. You want to set the pot upside down to dry so that the bottom can dry out too. Drying all the sides together will help prevent cracking. I like to dry the pottery under a thin cotton cloth. The cloth creates an evenly humid environment underneath and protects the pottery from drafts or anything that will cause uneven drying. After a couple of days, it's fine to take off the cloth to finish drying. Next, I'll bisque the tumblers. I bisque to 900 degrees Celsius, which takes about 24 hours. Once the pottery is bisqued, it comes up pink due to the high iron content of this clay. After inspecting for any flaws and sanding down any sharp edges, I can glaze the tumblers. I chose a white glossy glaze that is a little bit translucent. That will allow the irregular colors of the clay to come through. After another journey into the kiln to 1240 Celsius this time, my tumblers are finished. I love how these pieces turned out. The irregularity of the clay perfectly matches the organic forms of them. You can also see that I didn't bother wiping away the glaze drips because I think they add to the beauty of the glaze. I wish I could let you know how these cups feel in my hands. They fit my hands perfectly and feel so cozy to hold. I can also imagine drinking tea out of them and warming my fingers. You can let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me make next. If you like this video, you might also be interested in this other slab building video where I teach you all the ways you can add curves to slab pottery to make even more organic forms. I hope you have a cozy and creative day. Bye friends.